Hi everyone, it's Kelly here for Soy and Shay and thank you for joining me for another soap making video. Now if you caught this week's midweek video, you may have already guessed after piping all those little agaves that we are going to be making an agave lime soap. I get my fragrance oil from Aroma and this particular one has notes of orange, lime, green agave, hyacinth, musk and sandalwood. It has 0.05% vanillin, so really only a minuscule amount, so I don't expect that this will discolour too much on me. So we are making a bit of a white base, but we're also doing a layered soap. So in my bucket here, I have my oils. We are soaping quite warm today, or warm for what I like. It's really, really hot here at the moment. In fact, it's the hottest day of the week, but I really need to get lots of things done, so... I, I must do what I must do and we are sitting in about 32 degrees Celsius which I think is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit um, and it is just a little bit warmer than I like but because we're going to do layered soaps I'm not too bothered if this does um, move a little bit quick on me. So I've got my oils in the bucket here and I have my lye water solution. I'm going to pour it down my stick blender just to avoid any splashback. I'm going to mix it up and then separate it out for a colour. Because it is so warm here today, I've only brought that to a very light emulsion so it's not even making any marks on the top of my soap batter. But this way I know that we'll get the longest possible time I can get out of it given how warm we're working at today. So I'm going to pour a good portion of this off into this jug here. Let's do it a little bit more. Alright, so into... We'll move this back over here because I'm going to make that my white base. Into this bigger jug here, I am going to put in some elusive mica from my micro obsession. It's a really nice blue-green sort of colour which I do associate with the agaves. There's so many different sorts of agaves out there, but I really do like the blue-green ones. And then into my other container here, we have some water dispersible titanium dioxide, and I'm just going to add that into there. I'm going to give these a mix up and then I'm going to put some fragrance oil into this jug only and then I'm going to pour my first layer into the soap. So I can see that that fragrance oil has riced a little bit as it has touched the fragrance here and I didn't quite pour in the full amount I wanted to. I'm actually going to give this another little bit of a stick blend just to see if we can beat some of that ricing out. Yes, we can, but it has made it that little bit thicker. But as I said, we are making layers, so I'm not too worried that it has gone thick. I'm going to do something naughty there and just scrape that out. And then pop that over there and give that a bit of a stir. It's not too thick. It is still actually quite workable for what we're going to make here. I'm just going to wipe up my mess. I seem to be making more and more mess these days. We'll grab hold of our mould, so I'm using my usual loaf mould here, and I place this ribbon across the bottom of it because it really helps me to be able to lift the, the soap out when it is saponified, so I don't actually push any um, holes into the bottom of the soap when I'm working. What I'm going to do is pour a good part of this jug into the bottom of this mould, and we're going to make that first sort of layer in a green. Just going to leave a little bit behind in my jug and then I'll flatten this one out. Alright, now that I've got that green in there, I'm just going to get a little bit of Bronze Sparks Mica again from my Mica Obsession. Uh, just holding, I've got a little tea strainer here. And just holding my tea strainer over the lid so that the mica doesn't go absolutely everywhere. I'm just going to put a small scoop 
in there and I am going to do a mica line across the top of this green. a really thick Michael line but I do want a fairly good coverage on here. Now that I've got that on there I'm just going to give it a very gentle blow across the top just to disperse some of that mica a little bit. So that's got rid of any sort of excess sitting on the top which may actually end up separating the soap if you've got too much sort of thick layer there. So that's looking good. What I've got now is just a piece of paper towel. I have got some rubbing alcohol. This is a 70%. I'm just going to wet my paper towel and I'm going to wipe down the edges of this mold just so that we don't get any mica up on the next bit where I actually don't want it. Okay, so I've cleaned my mold up as much as I possibly can there. I have made a couple of divots in the soap but I'm not too worried there. What I'm now going to do, we'll just give this a green, a little bit of a stir just to try and loosen it back up again. And what I might end up doing, it's going to lighten it a little bit. We, we will pour a little bit of this white in there, which will also help just to loosen that up so we can do a bit of a drop swirl of colours, hopefully. So we're going to do that one. As I said, I am working at very warm temperatures today and I find whenever I work at this warmer temperature, I do have issues with the soap setting up on me. So we'll see what we end up with. The idea was to get a nice um, swirling soap, but we may not. We'll see. So I'm going to finish pouring my fragrance in and I'm going to stick blend this one. Okay, so that actually did rust quite badly, so needed a fair bit of stick blending. But by giving it a really good stir, I've pretty much got rid of all of that rising from out of there. But again, because it is so warm, this has thickened up a lot more than what I wanted to be able to do a really nice fluid drop swirl. We're going to try for an in the pot swirl then, just to see what we are going to get. Again, we'll see. It is quite thick now. I'm just going to kind of dollop it in mix it through and we'll see what we end up with. Alright, so we'll give that another bit of a, a stir through even though it's quite thick. We should still get some really nice swirls go through this soap as long as I break them up a little bit there. So we'll just grab that mould back in to camera view and I am now just going to tip this on the top. I shouldn't need to break the fall but it is quite heavy so I'm still going to use my spatula just to disperse that soap fragrance so that we don't cut into that layer. And now that I've got most of that sitting there I should now be able to just keep pouring without the help of that spatula. It is smelling really nice. You really get those sort of lime and orange sort of smells. I'm not getting much of the musk or the sandalwood, but definitely that orange and lemon and that hyacinth is coming through it as well. So I'm going to keep scraping this bowl out and then we will come back and we will finish the top off. Okay, so we've got that all now scraped out. What I am going to do is just grab that tea strainer again and I'm just going to put just a very, very small dusting of this Bronze Sparks Mica over the top just to tie in all of those colours. But I'm really not going to do too much because we have got those agave plants to put on the top. And I've also got a couple of other little things I'm thinking of doing as well. Okay, so that's enough just to give it that little bit of texture. So we'll put the rest back into this pot and we'll go and grab the little plants. 
Okay, so here are our little agave style succulents. Um, I am hoping that the colours on them will morph back to what they should be. Um, the two colours that I have used are actually known for morphing into funny colours, but if not, they still actually match in quite well with the colour of the soap there. All I'm going to do, this is my cut end, I think. So I've basically made a succulent for each of the soaps. I'm going to just place them onto the top of the soaps here. If you want to see how I made these little agave looking um, succulents, there is the midweek video which I will leave a link to so you can see how I made them. They are as always open to artistic interpretation as to what they actually really look like. Um, it is actually quite hard to get a realistic looking agave but I'm pretty happy with how these ones have come up. So all I'm doing is just gently peeling them off the paper which I build them all up onto and I'm centering them on the soap so that at least each soap is going to get that middle sort of section of the agave plant on it. We did a few more than I actually needed so I'm trying to pick out the smaller plants first and then hopefully each of those soaps will get a good proportion of the plant on them. Okay, so I've just been doing a little bit of humming and harring. I couldn't quite decide whether or not to add anything more into this. Uh, so I have actually called Hubby out to have a look for me and tell me whether he thought my sort of ideas I had going through my head. I could pipe extra cacti on there, but then that actually might detract from the actual agave. I could put some salt rocks on there, but then I'm thinking it's going to be harder to cut it if I do that. And he's basically said, no, leave it as it is and just let the little agave speak for themselves once it's cut, which we'll listen to him on this one who will give him that. So all I am actually going to do is give it a quick spritz with some blizzard mica just so that the leaves of those plants really pick up and sparkle and then I'm going to bring you down and give you a closer look of this agave lime. Okay so here is the soap up close and I'm kind of trying to picture it once it's cut with each of those little pieces of agave on the top. As my husband has just said to me it is going to be the simplicity of the top that is really going to bring this soap to life. So we're going to leave it sit overnight and then come back tomorrow and cut it open and see what we've got on the inside. We are back to cut into agave lime and you can see that that horrible browny gold looking colour has actually turned into that sort of limey green colour that I was hoping to get for these agave plants. It is smelling really nice. You really get that lime um, sort of smell come through. And I do still get hints of that hyacinth. It has got a little bit of the musky smell coming through now, but mainly I'm picking up lime and hyacinth out of this one. Going to get it lined up onto the multi bar cutter and I am going to just push on down. I know that some of these plants are going to get cut. Um, but I'm going to try and make sure that a majority of the soap ends up with uh, that, like that centre of the plant so you kind of get that real idea. A lot of these little leaves, they're going to get trimmed and they are actually just going to fall off the soap altogether. But I'll probably ball all those little pieces up and keep them for myself to use as a soap. Alright, so now we're starting to get through it. I'm just going to catch the end here. Okay, so we'll grab this piece from off the end here. You can see we have our little agave plant with the correct coloured greens. And we have a beautiful swirl through here. And we've got that mica line has come up really nice as well. And it just sets the whole bar off. And it incorporates the mica that we've put on the top. I did also put onto here once I finished um, the first lot of filming. I got in some biodegradable 
clear glitter so I have added a little bit of that onto the top of the plant as well and it really does sparkle and shine and bring those leaves to life so I'm really pleased with how that one has come up and I'm pleased that these do get a good part of that agave plant on the top so you really get that idea of what it is meant to be um, smelling of and I completely agree with my husband it really didn't need anything more on the top of this just the pure simplicity of that bar is what it what really has set it off the most so we'll grab this piece here we do have a few little glycerin rivers running through it but as always I don't really mind those glycerin rivers I think it really adds to the whole look of the bar of soap and just adds that extra little bit of texture and as I've said before in other videos that glycerin is what really helps to add to a nice moisturizing bar of soap as well so I hope you've enjoyed watching how I make my agave lime soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will certainly get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell sign and it will let you know the next time I bring you a video. I would like to say thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. When I uploaded Wednesday's video, I noticed that we have gone up to a huge 3,000 subscribers and I am so grateful for you, all of you guys that are watching and supporting me and allowing me to continue on my journey. I will be looking at doing another um, competition very, very soon just to say thank you. So until the next video comes out, I hope you have a great week. If you are up in the Northern Hemisphere, I hope you are staying warm. And if you are down here in Australia, I hope you're staying cool. Until then, have a good one. Bye.